you'll be able to, if you use the language of mathematics, the idea is that you'll be able to actually uh, perform proofs. And moreover, you know, what, what actually what mathematicians are doing right now is, is sort of the, the, the other way around. Because they, they realize that even though th they have this wonderful language of mathematics, they are attacking problems that are really, really hard and harder and harder and harder, you know, and, and finally, even with this beautiful language that they, they are inventing, these problems are still hard, okay? So they are, they, they are doing proofs that, that go from, you know, hundreds of pages. And they find out that they make mistakes. They are human. So even though they, they have perfected this language of mathematics and the logic and so on, and they are doing these steps and so on, and so on they find that they are making mistakes. They publish papers, and after a few years, somebody says, oh, here, you made a mistake. This is not true. And they have to retract the paper. This is happening. Okay, so what mathematicians started doing, some of them at least, but it's still not very popular because they don't like computers. But but um, some some of the mathematicians say say you know if we formalize mathematics enough, if we create a very formal language for mathematics and we form formalize the, the foundations of mathematics, then we can actually feed a computer, right? And the computer will prove, will check our, well, maybe it won't prove the theorem, but it will check our proof and will find mistakes. Okay? So this is the future of mathematics. The future of mathematics, will, will they, they are now going through its formalization of the foundations of mathematics. They will feed it to computers. So these, so computer science and mathematics are actually merging. And this is something that's happening, okay? And eventually, they will emerge. And we will be using mathematics as our programming language. And mathematics has this tremendous advantage over any other programming language that was specifically invented for humans, right? I mean, when, when they were inventing the language of mathematics, they were not thinking about computers. Now they are thinking about computers, right? But, but that, that's, that's an afterthought. These languages are invented. The, the, the language of mathematics was invented by humans, for humans, for human consumption, right? We might think it's, it's, it's difficult to... to, to but, but there is no simpler language, really, you know? Right? Right? This, this is the simplest language to express the things that they want to express. And, and it has been tested for thousands of years. So this is a, a language. And it, you know, it can be a programming language. And it will be a programming language at some point. So this is what, yes? May I ask you a question? Yes. Uh, this uh, uh, machine, uh, this mathematical language, will fit also in uh, quantum uh, uh, computing and programming. So the question is, will it? Will this mathematical language fit um, in quantum computing and, and uh, quantum programming and quantum programming? And you know, I, I think this is more of a physics. Thing, right? So quantum computing was, is more of, uh, but, but physics and mathematics are so interrelated, right? Physics is built on, on mathematics. So whatever language physicists are using, it's the language of mathematics. You know, the wave functions, they are functions, right? The Hilbert spaces, you know, the quantum entanglement and so on. It's all described using mathematics. So mathematics is the language of both physics and, and computing. So quantum computing will also be driven by mathematics. Right? So the bottom line is 
we, we don't have to drop everything right now and start learning mathematics. But, but I want you to, to, to go home and think about this. Uh, you know, like how safe is my job? You know, how. Because you, you know what happened to, to, to dinosaurs. They died because they were so specialized. That, the, you know, that they, they, had, they had these niches that were, they were so perfectly fitting. Every single dinosaur was fitting in perfectly in its niche. And when the meteor came, you know, they all died, right? So if you're a programmer and you found your niche, and you are sitting there and happily, you know, hacking, you know, and you think this will last forever and, and uh, will be a source of income forever. I don't think so. I, I think we have to be prepared for, for these big events, the, the meteors, the, the, the AIs are coming, okay? And I don't think for, for the, for the foreseeable future. I really, and people are, are afraid that these AIs will be smarter than us and, and you know, that they, they will take over. Eventually, maybe, I don't know. This, I don't want to make this prediction, okay? <laughs> uh, but for the foreseeable future, I think AIs will be pretty dumb. You know, this, this, this AI that, that can play Go and, and win, I don't think it can uh, clean the kitchen or make a pizza. <laughs> No, they are extremely specialized. They, they, they are, I mean, explaining to, to a computer how to play Go is very simple, you know, because there are, there's a finite number of moves that, that can be made, and the goal is well, well specified, you know. You have to capture territory, and the, the side that captures more territory wins, right? So, so the specification is extremely easy, right? But in most other programming jobs, the specification is the hardest part, right? So these, these jobs in which you are implementing something or doing the how-to, telling the computer how to do something, you know, these will go away. But the jobs in which you are telling the computer what to do, they will not. So the languages that, the specification languages, will survive, and the programmers who specify what to do will survive, at least for now, right? And that's, that's again, this is the difference between declarative programming and imperative programming. Declarative programming tells the computer what to do, and it will be a long time before the computers will figure out what to do. They don't know. What do these humans want? No. Right? And the, and the language to explain to, to a computer what to do has to be very precise. Okay? Because if you don't spe specifically, I mean, there, there are these jokes and stories about people trying to, uh, you know, explain to some genies. Right? like the wishes that they have, you know. So there is there is this uh, story where uh, a, a poor peasant couple is uh, found found a lamp with a genie or something, and the genie says, three wishes. You, can, you have three wishes, okay?" And they were starving. They were they were poor and starving people. So the woman says, "You know, I I want a sausage." Right? And the guy says, "Are you?" Stupid! You know we could have everything. I, I wish the sausage was stuck to your nose. And bam, the sausage is stuck to her nose, right? And they have to take the third wish to like remove the sausage, right? <laughs> and, and and so so people knew about this problem of explaining to the AI. They called it a genie, right? But but th that's that's the same problem. Explaining to the AI what we want, you know, and and. If we explain it in the wrong terms, then we'll, we'll end up with sausages <laughs> stuck to our noses, right? And, and probably like the modern version of, of this, of this uh, story would, would end up 
with them having like huge uh, hospital bills for sausage uh, removal and <laughs> surgery and, and MRI of the sausage nose and so on, right? <coughs> So, so let's let's uh, finish this by by thinking about, you know, what are the things that uh, we should start learning in our free time, so that we don't fall into this trap, right? And uh, and that we we can have jobs in in the future. Okay, thank you. Good. I think I know answers to all the questions. <laughs> yes? Do you, re do you really think that we, we would be able to have uh, languages with a firm and solid mathematical foundation? Because if I, if I have to buy it right now, I would say that Haskell is the language that looks like um, it has the, a real mathematical foundation, but actually it doesn't. Mm -hmm. I mean, it says that we use monads to structure side effects, but in the end, these are not monads. And we use uh, equations that come from category theory to perform optimization, but it's not even a category. So it looks like a bit cheating. Mm -hmm. uh, yes, yes. So the question is, you know, if we want to use, use mathematics, and like the, the, the closest thing that we have now in programming to mathematics is Haskell. And uh, and Haskell is really cheating, right? <laughs> because it's not really a category, but the category of types and functions. It's not really a category because of the bottoms, right? And the never-ending com computations and so on. So, yeah, it's true. It's true. And we we are struggling with it. You have to make some compromises, and uh, I mean, it looks to me that. Uh, at some points, I mean, if you want to have something reasonably usable, you have to drop uh, decent mathematics. Uh, and decent mathematics uh, means uh, that it should be reasonably simple, uh, simple uh -huh. but still expressive. Uh. Well, we, we don't even know yet what decent mathematics is. You see, people are still working on founda foundations of mathematics. You know, and... and um, who knows? I mean, the, the latest thing in, in, in mathematics is homotopy type theory, right? Uh, and um, but but it's it's an unfinished thing. It's not finished yet. It's so so we'll we'll be you know trying, right? M maybe maybe the thing is to get closer to mathematics. Uh, and and get mathematics closer to some kind of closure that that it's actually a complete theory, or maybe it will never be complete. I don't know, but but this is a, this is a, this is the direction. It's not a goal that we can just grab and, and have it, right? I don't think so. But I think people are, are working on, on foundations of, of Haskell. And there are other languages that are even higher level than the theorem provers, you know, that, that yeah. So, so it's, it's a work in progress. Yes? Because actually, so uh, for example, another language that is used sometimes to, uh, actually recently used is Idris, which is built on top yes. of Haskell, and it has even the utility of proving theorems about the code you're developing, but as you said beforehand, the problem is that the code is not efficient. For example, uh, suppose that I'm in a university and I have no uh, huge team of research, I want to develop the code as fast as possible, so the best thing to do is to write the code and prove the correctness, and so Idris could be, for example, a good tool to use that, but on the other hand, the, uh, it's not optimized because even I want to do some benchmarks of, for example, my data structures, and I want to achieve that. For example, Idris is even better than using, for example, Coq or other proof assistants mm -hmm. that are not that the utility of reading the data, and that has the utility of reading the data, so I could prove theorems about things that are in the mm -hmm. real world, but actually, 
So this is one of the problems I see, so optimizations. And the other one is maybe that uh, there have been even some attempts of defining languages that from specifications, they provide the code. But the problem is that sometimes that languages are very hard to understand to developers. So even continuing the, um, the same uh, topic you said before about the economy, even that languages are not so economic, so uh, economic to the programmer to learn because they have to spend too much time to mm -hmm. learn a language that actually provides the kind of result they want to obtain. So yeah, so what could be the result? Because actually, the, so the specification could be uh, drawn uh, drawn out using category theory because I want to an operation that does like that. So uh, uh, sum or a product, or even using theorems. So what what could be a language possibly usable in the future that has all these things together? Is that is this language currently available, or something that has a right to be uh, developed for? Uh -huh. Okay, so this is one of these questions that I don't have answers to. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's, a, it's a very good question. I mean, so yeah, I mean, uh, like Idris is, is, a, is a good language, right? But it's not, uh, th its performance is, is, is terrible, right? Um, but, but it's an academic language, you know? It, it hasn't been, uh, not, people didn't put a lot of money in, in improving its performance. Right and and I mean if 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 Google decided let's say to invest uh, you know hundreds of millions of dollars into Idris, they could probably make it run fast, right? They could use the AI, AI to optimize it. Who knows, right? But right now they they won't because why? You know we can hire these programmers and they they can do this <laughs> and and. Since we are talking about the economy, and this is, it's it's interesting to actually look from the uh, a certain perspective on, on what we are doing as programmers, right? So so uh, you, you know, as, as programmers, we we always think that our goal is to write correct programs, right? We would like to be able to write correct programs. I mean, we do all this debugging and, and so on to find bugs. And, and um, so if we had like the theorem prover that would prove that our program is correct, everybody would be happy suddenly, right? I don't think so. I don't think so. This is not the, the economic forces are um, to produce software that's good enough, right? Further improvement of quality of software is just throwing money away. It just makes no economic sense. You know? This is like, it's, it's the software it should be bad. It's, uh, so, like, people, people were doing these comparisons between uh, Haskell and uh, other languages. Like, in, in what language uh, there are fewer bugs? You know, it's like, let's develop, let's have a bunch of teams of developers who will develop software. These people will be using Haskell, these people will be using ML maybe, and these people will be using C++ and assembly. And, and in most of these studies, it turns out that there isn't that big a difference in quality of software. Why? Because people keep improving software and, and debugging it until it reaches a certain level of bugginess, okay? That's acceptable, and they stop. So no matter what language you are using, you know, you will just reach this level and stop, right? M maybe in Haskell you will stop earlier, right? But, but you will stop anyway. Because, you know, throwing additional money into improving the quality of software is just a lost proposition. You don't want to do that. It's good enough, let's ship it. Because there, is, there, there are market forces, right? There's another company making a similar product. And if they get to the market with a buggy product faster than us, they win. Right? So economic forces say, no, quality of software, I mean, it's, it has to be good enough. Because, I mean, but, but like, we, we are seeing right now that uh, the quality of, of software is, is Pretty 
horrible, <laughs> right? I mean, it's really, really bad. And it's not because programmers are bad people, right? But they are forced to, to ship code that's buggy for economical reasons, right? I don't know if we can do anything about it. We cannot refuse, you know, to know. Cannot ship the stuff. It's, it's buggy. <laughs> because there is a manager who say, yes, we have to, because otherwise you lose your job because the competition will win, right? Uh, the question is, uh, the software is uh, uh, stuff like any other industrial uh, product. So my refrigerator is not perfect. Uh, <coughs> my software is not perfect. It's mm -hmm. the same. My refrigerator is good enough to work for 10 years. Okay, it's, it's, it's a fine for me. It's built in yeah. obsolescence. Yeah. They actually <laughs> create these yeah, yeah, yeah. devices and, and so and that they the software will be the same. I don't know. Maybe I, I have some doubt about some update of my operative system that yeah. makes my computer go slower, but just because I'm because it I has to download I, I more think bad more now. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but uh, in, in in this scenario, mm -hmm. I think that is uh, it, it will be uh, like a limit to arrive to a uh, descriptive uh, mathematical language. I think that it, if you are building an ER in in some mm, Normal language. Mm -hmm. You during the this travel to to the perfection, you find some halfway good solu good enough solution like uh, uh -huh. a quite good uh, description language uh, with uh, some uh, imperative inside just uh -huh. to correct. Uh, and I, this is what happens uh, in the in the past. Uh, like uh, it's not perfectly object oriented, but it's enough right, object right. oriented <laughs> to ship something as yeah. object oriented. Yeah, good enough is the enemy of, yeah. of the best. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah it is the matter of industry. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, unfortunately, that yeah, because I, 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 I think that maybe it's, it's an upper limit to 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 aim to a, mm -hmm. a, a perfect declarative language, but mm -hmm. when you have to ship something. And you have, uh, oh yes, and yeah, uh, yeah, right. maybe good enough is something that works. So, mm -hmm. and with with neural networks, it will be even worse because if the neural network makes makes a decision that seems to us wrong, for instance, it's driving a car into a wall and killing its passengers, right? We can't really ask you, why did you do that. <laughs> we'll say, well, gut feeling or something like that, right? I mean. We can't say whether this is because the neural network was badly designed, the, the software that runs these neurons was badly designed, or the training was bad, or or maybe it was actually a good decision. Maybe maybe the guy who was driving this car would be the next Hitler. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I figured it out. I, get, I just had this feeling that I had to kill this guy. Sorry. <laughs> Okay. Yes, wait, <laughs> <laughs> Instead of adding a uh, uh, general part was uh, uh, language based on mathematics, uh, do you think that uh, the future will be uh, specialized languages, several specialized languages? For example, uh, uh, SQL, it's not, it's not diffuse, uh -huh. but it's declarative. You tell the, com the computer what you want, uh, mm -hmm. and uh, he, he tries to find the, the best way to obtain the data, the data faster. Uh -huh. So probably I, I think in the future about uh, we will have uh, several languages, one for that extraction, one for, uh, I don't know, protocol. Uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So, so the question is, well, are we going to have specialized languages that still based on mathematics, right? I mean, so, so SQL is based on mathematics. But, and, and mathematics has many sub-languages too, right? So a sub-language of mathematics that's used for programming uh, databases is SQL. Or some newer version of it, maybe at some point, will, will. But, but SQL was built from, from uh, understanding the math uh, of databases, right? Of, of these tuples, uh, right? It, 
it's it's a, it's a language based on mathematics, and it, it is declarative, as you said, right? So so I would say it's pretty close to math. Yeah. Okay. We have written a huge amount of code. Where does it start uh, a declarative language, and uh, when does it end a uh, domain-specific language to wrap uh, all the code we have uh, written? <coughs> <coughs> so you're, you're you're asking about the code that is, that already exists or wrapped by a domain-specific language. Uh, which will ask the computer what we want, not what to do. <coughs> I'm not sure I understand. <laughs> so we were talking about the, um, to ask the computer what we want. Yes. Not what to do. Right. A declarative uh, program. Yeah. Yes. But until now, uh, we have uh, written. Uh, a huge amount of code, uh, imperative code. Yes. If uh, we do a wrapping around it with a domain specific language, so uh, telling the computer what to do, uh -huh. not how to do. Uh, where does it end? A uh, domain specific language is not mathematics. Where does it end uh, the domain specific language with imperative code and where it starts a uh, declarative language with mathematics? Where does the declarative and uh, where does the imperative, where's the boundary between these two? Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see mathematics around the uh, PSL. So why declarative language may be the future uh -huh. with mathematics where a DSL doesn't have mathematics? But, but the, DS, the, the more declarative a DSL is, the closer it gets to mathematics. No, I mean a anything that's more declarative is, is definitely closer to mathematics than than something that's imperative. I, 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 that's that's my feeling. You know, so so like if 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 we evolve these domain-specific languages that are more and more declarative, then eventually we reach a, a, a level which they become mathematics. There is there is a, a, a merging of both math and, and programming languages. I mean, eventually this this declarative code is is uh, is compiled down to imperative code, right? Because uh, a, a, com a computer is imperative. A computer does things imperatively, right? But but it's like we would like to try to avoid. Uh, Telling the computer exactly what to do, we we think um, you know that a neural network or an algorithm will have a better chance of doing this correctly and efficiently than we do. This this not, this hasn't yet happened. You know, this is still in the future, but I think this is this is what the direction. Um, I have this feeling. Uh, as uh, the, the, the other person uh, said, uh, uh, now we have languages which are really advanced. I, uh, I remember trying to use COP in mm -hmm. the year 2000, yeah. and it was a real pain. If I look at the landscape of functional languages 15, 20 years ago, and what now we can use, uh, I, I see a tremendous progress. Mm -hmm. Haskell right now is you know, even uh, a pay comparison to what you could uh, have used, uh, let's say, 15 years ago. Yeah. So in one sense, there is a huge improvement in language theory and also in the practice. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, uh, with uh, deep learning, <coughs> companies like Google, Facebook, whatever, have proved that they can do even more amazing things uh, understanding people talking, understanding yes. faces and driving mm -hmm. cars and whatever. So, in a sense, there is a, 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 a direction of huge improvement. On the other side, as you told a few minutes ago, 
a large amount of software that we have is crap. Yes. I have the position that uh, uh, it's getting worse. We are using even more crap. The, the software that I have on my laptop is more crappy than the software that I had 10 years ago, on average. Uh -huh. So, I, I have this strange feeling of something that gets better and better and better and no results. Uh -huh. In a sense, uh, even lagging behind, uh -huh. it seems to me that just what's missing? What's wrong? Yes, but 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 you see, I mean, ten years ago, um, you 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 were you didn't you couldn't just like talk to your operating system and say, find me the nearest pizza restaurant, right? Yeah. Now you can, right? So, so software is getting crappier and crappier, but it does more and more stuff. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so the functionality grows, and it, 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 this is like I'm, I'm we are always, always on this boundary, right? As, as soon as we have more power, we will try to do more things. But since these are hard things, we'll, we'll write crappy software to do this. But we are attacking new, new problems, right? Yeah, but, but do you think that is sustainable in the long run? This huge piling of crap uh, <laughs> over and over and over. No, I, I mean th there are there are That's people thinking that, for example, with the uh, next uh, explosion of uh, the Internet of Things uh, uh -huh. and uh, putting uh, small computers everywhere, yeah. then sooner or later something bad, perhaps something really bad, will happen, mm -hmm. and perhaps people will die or whatever, yeah, you know? yeah. a lot of scenarios which yes. <coughs> are uh, really scary. And that day, somebody will decide the rules. Mm -hmm. And that guy will be a politician who doesn't understand anything about computers and anything uh -huh. about mathematics. So uh, uh, I, I so more, now we are I'm more scared about the politician that from the we are, AI. We are now going away from economics and getting into politics. <laughs> you know, a bigger can of yeah. worms. At the top, yes. the horse is stuck. The yes, the yes. <laughs> and I think that's, that's a topic for you. another talk. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, maybe we should get uh, to our Okay. Pizza and dinner. Okay. Thank you very much.